Good morning, ladies, and you're welcome to Esther's preparation room. Uh, EPR, as we fondly call it, is our own private place as women where we come together to pray and to intercede on issues that we know are on the heart of the Lord, that we know is important to God, and we count it a great privilege to stand in the gap in the place of prayer. Thank you very much for joining us, and we hope that as you participate in this prayer, you'll be richly blessed as well. In Jesus' name. Uh, this month, our focus, this month of September, our focus is on the kingdom order for sports, art, and entertainment. Very strongly, when the Lord gave us a word that 2018 is the year to step into our place, we decided to focus on the seven cultural mountains, where we know that if we look at all of them, we all have a purpose or an assignment related to a cultural mountain. And God has said that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be raised up above every other mountain. In other words, that for every of the cultural mountains, the people that represent God will be at the top of those mountains, bringing glory to God. And our passion and our desire is that the church of God will step into their place so that nations can come into those mountains because the church is leading. And I know that God will speak to us. As we go along, let's just spend some time thanking God. This is the ninth month of the year. It's amazing. God has been so good to us. God has been so faithful. Let's just begin to thank the Lord for everything he has done. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. God is a good God. He's a merciful God. Uh, he does great things. Let's just begin to thank him for all that he has done. Let's just thank him. You know, nine, <clears throat> uh, most of the time people remember nine from the perspective of um, um a period of gestation or when a woman gives birth, um, it takes nine months. You know, so a lot of times, you know, people use that to remember that it's a season where you can thank God for fruitfulness, thank God for his favor, thank God for his mercy. Uh, Bible says in James 1.17, every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. God, one good gift and one perfect gift that we can all say is life. If you are alive and you are well, we give God the praise. If you are alive and you're struggling with health, we can still thank God because only the living can believe God for healing. Let's just begin to thank God. The Bible says we should not be anxious about anything. So as we've entered this ninth month, I don't know what you've gone through this year, but I want you to be encouraged. I want you to celebrate. I want you to come to God with thanksgiving. Say, God, no matter what it is, I will not be anxious. Instead, I'm going to thank you because your mercy and your grace have sustained me every single day of 2018. I have seen your goodness, his mercy, and his compassion. Let's thank God because he has not left us alone. I don't know about you, but even if nothing else, you belong to a group called Esther's Preparation Room, whereby if you have an issue of things you're going through, you can raise a prayer request and women can join you in the place of prayer. So you are never alone. You never have to struggle. Let's thank God for that. Not a lot of people have communities, families, friends, colleagues, and neighbors that they can call on to. Father, we just thank you that we have the Holy Spirit and that we're not alone. Father, we praise you. Psalm 28 reminds us that we should thank you because you are the one that hears our cry. Oh, Lord, you have been our strength and our shield. If not for you, where would we have been? My heart trusts in you, oh God, because you are my helper. My heart leaps for joy this morning, the 1st of September. My heart joins my sisters and I. We are all leaping for joy because you have been so good. We are grateful that you've given to us, oh God Almighty, your kingdom that cannot be shaken. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Hallowed be your name. We love you. We bless your name. We honor you. We adore you. Blessed be your name forevermore. Lord, we thank you that this year month will be filled with fruitfulness. Our mind will be fruitful with divine ideas. Our lips will be fruitful because we will eat of the fruit of our mouth. Our confessions will be positive and they will bring life. Thank you that whatever our hands lay up, we lay our hands upon. Thank you, O oh God, because it will be fruitful. Thank you that our wombs will carry and bring forth children, both our spiritual wombs and our physical wombs in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that this month of September, we will see a great soul harvest. This month of September, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will fill the earth, that the glory of God will fill the whole earth, even in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we said, this, this fo the focus for this month is um, uh, Kingdom Order for Sports, Arts, and Entertainment. And I just wanted to, um, I'd rather not have all the slides showing, if I can just leave it at the comments 
so I don't get distracted. Thank you. Um, uh, the scripture and the comments is fine. Um, Exodus 31 verse 1 to 6, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of her of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. And I have personally appointed Oholiab, son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant. Moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen so they can make all the things I have commanded you to make. This is one of the most encouraging scriptures I see in, in the word of God because it reminds me God is saying here, I, I have given, I have given. Now God gave skills, I gave special skills, but then God says that the people he gave special skills to, they were gifted but then due to practice and dedication, they now became master craftsmen. And we see God calling out the best of the best to use for his purposes. God gave every human being gifts, talents, and the power of imagination to level the playing field of life, irrespective of our background or pedigree. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different upbringings. We all have different um, uh, educational acumen, so to speak. God knew that some people will be born in certain parts of the world and others in other parts of the world that may not have the opportunity to take care of advantages. But God gave something that no human being can take from everyone. And that's why it's a level playing field. Nobody can take your gifts from you. It's innate. You were born with it. You were fashioned with it. Your gifts represent your skills, your talents, your ability to think or to do certain things that does not come. For example, if God blessed you with an amazing voice, who can take it from you nobody can come and squeeze you for as long as you have life and then the second thing god took, gave to everybody that is so powerful and i want every woman and i pray this is what's going to drive our years this year's retreat that most of us have not actualized including myself to the level we should which is the power of imagination you can sit down in no matter the situation you can be in a slum or you can be in a penthouse and you both people can go to the same place in their imagination. You can dream up a different future. You can dream of something else God has for you and nobody can stop you or engage you there. You can fly as high as you can go. And God is now saying that in Christ, he now gives to us his spirit of grace and truth that whatsoever we see in that imagination by the spirit of God can become a reality. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. God is saying that the church is supposed to show his mastercraft. It says in Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let me pause. My dear ladies, using ourselves and anybody who's going to listen to this as an example, what has God created you as his workman? When God looked at you, he said, this is perfect. When God looked at you, he said, this is brilliant. Irrespective of the fact that you are in a fallen body that has its limitations, in you is a power and a gift that God said, now this is the good work she is going to do. And I have set it and I have finished it already. Now by my spirit, I'm going to walk her through it. Do you understand that? What should you be walking in that you are still at the starting line? There is a mountain that God has for you and I to take control of. If we look at the mountain of sports, arts, and entertainment, God has given gifts to the body of Christ. God has given his children gifts. But who is on that mountain? Who is getting the glory in Hollywood, in Nollywood, in Bollywood, in Gollywood, in any wood we want to call it? 
When it comes to um, sports and notable names in the swimming, boxing, um, um, gymnastics, uh, football, we talk about different leagues and the rest of it, we talk about Arsenal, we talk about all of these. There's nothing that stops a league, from being a, a Christian league, dominating the world such that they stand, such that people will pay millions, such that they are notable and they, they create systems and opportunities to give God glory. It is time for us in the body of Christ to manifest the wisdom, the ability, and the expertise that God has blessed us with. You, my dear sister and I, we are experts in one area or the other. God expects us to be master craftsmen in certain things. If it's in business negotiation, you must be a master craftsman. If it's in HR, you must be so solid with people that you just don't do HR, but you see people for who they are and you bring out their talents from a spiritual perspective that people wonder. If you are a nurse or a medical professional, you don't only care in the physical, you declare and you speak that people, you will speak to people prophetically, they don't even know. All they know is that you walk into the room and the pain goes away. God is saying that I want to anoint my master craftsmen and any mountain they are on, anywhere they touch people, anywhere they can influence people, I want to use them. And I want us to lift up our voices right now in the place of prayer. Let's begin to thank God for the Holy Spirit. Let's thank God that he has empowered the church, that he has blessed us with the power to live a distinguished life that brings glory to his name. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 3, for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for, uh, to, for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through personal knowledge of him. God is saying that he has given to us all things that we need. Let's begin to thank him. That Father, thank you for you have given us all things that we need to live an established life. Thank you, O oh Lord Almighty, that you've given to us all things that we need to prosper. Thank you because you have given to us all things that we need to excel. Thank you, O oh Lord Almighty, that you've given to us all things that we need to be at the mountain top. Oh Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you, O oh God Almighty. We bless you because you are good and you are faithful. Thank you, O oh God Almighty, for giving us a level playing field in the body of Christ for all human beings. Thank you, O oh God Almighty, for showing us the way to go. Thank you, O oh God Almighty, for revealing your purposes and your plans for us, O oh Lord Almighty. Thank you because you've given to us the Holy Spirit. You said in the last days, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Thank you because, Lord Almighty, we will begin to have visions of the mountains you've called us to. That the mountain of sports, arts, and entertainment will be a mountain that we will take by your spirit. That the body of Christ will rise up and take its place. That we will take ownership of the things you've blessed us with. Let's pray, my dear sisters, that this mountain will produce leaders in the body of Christ that will bring glory Glory to God by displaying godly lifestyles. One of the challenges of the mountain is that, you know, and it's not easy. On the mountain, we see the mountain of the body of Christ of church. Sometimes we see when people begin to go controversial or people don't display God the way they ought to. We see people in the area of business or government. And it's sad to say that sometimes they are the ones that are also corrupt but calling the names of God but cheating the populace. But unfortunately, we see a lot of Christians also in the place of arts and entertainment. And we see them having to, you know, they want to do the will of God, but they are struggling with displaying that godly lifestyle. But the Bible says that whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, we should do it to the glory of God. Lord, we pray for the body of Christ. There are those that you have put on the mountain. We ask for the grace of God upon them. That, Lord, they will not bring shame to your name. That, Lord, they will not bring reproach to your name. We stand in the gap as your daughters, oh God, as a point of contact. Because there are some of us here that you've called us to the area of sports, arts, and entertainment. That, Lord, as you raise us up, oh God, we will demonstrate godly values. That we will not look to please anybody but you, oh God. That we will be sensitive to other people, oh God. That we will not do, act carelessly or in our own interest. But we, as Christians, we always remember that there are many who are looking at us, who are looking at us as examples and as role models. Help us, Lord, not to be a stumbling block to those that will be saved, whether we are in the music industry or the entertainment industry. Wherever we are, oh Lord, please grant us your grace. Dear ladies, can we begin to pray that 
Christians, believers that are called to this mountain, they will overcome darkness with the light. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men in Matthew 5, 16, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's just begin to pray that Lord Almighty, we pray for those who you've called to take control of the mountain of sports, arts, and entertainment and every other mountain, that they will shine as light, that their light will overcome darkness. Father, we know that every time we stand upon the mountain, we are at attacked by the enemy. We pray for strength. We pray for our brothers and sisters all over the world who are on the mountaintop. We pray, oh God Almighty, that you will strengthen them and they will not be discouraged. Oh, that they will not be pulled down. That Lord, your grace will be sufficient for them in the name of Jesus. You know, as I was speaking, I just remembered, I think it was this guy, Tim Tebow, that, you know, he suddenly, although everybody knew him as a great quarterback and all of that, but because he would kneel I think it's either after each touchdown in a way of acknowledging God. When everybody is shouting and the whole stadium filled with hundreds of thousands of people and millions watching, he would bow down and give glory to God. He passed a great statement. I think of Gabby Douglas, you know, who came from nowhere. And then as she finished, she said, I just give God all the glory because he's the one that helped me to do this. These are people that they use their abilities and they get to the top and multitudes and multitudes hear them. I go look at my favorite, if I must say, actor, which is Denzel Washington. And you look at how, you know, it takes even some of his roles and uses it to show that, you know, at times I play the role of a villain to show the, 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 that, uh, to show good and evil. I remember he said this about training day and to show that good will always overcome evil. You know, so people use their messaging, even with the constraints of the media and how they try to control languages. And we need more. We shouldn't just name a few. We need more. We need to battle for this mountain. Please join me, ladies, in beginning to declare that, Lord, even amongst us in Esther's preparation, there are women here who this is their passion, this is their area, but they don't know which way to go. They are artists in our midst, and their artistry shows up at times through fashion, through clothes, through hairstyles, through makeup up through different things some things are just an art we pray oh god you enable your daughters you empower them and then the body of christ that will bring glory that will let the holy spirit's light shine through us whether whatever the industry that lord almighty that every darkness and lie of the enemy will be rejected and removed in the name of jesus uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 22, 29, it says, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand in the presence of kings. He will not stand in the presence of the unknown. Another version says of mere men. Let's just begin to talk to the Lord. That Lord, just as you called Bezaliel, the son of Uri, you said grandson of her, of the tribe of Judah. Bible says, Lord, you have known me. Father God, you that you can choose and raise one up. We pray, oh God, raise us up, oh God. Raise up gifted and dynamic sportsmen and with women for the body of Christ. Where people that you have empowered and your children with your gifts and your talents and they've been blocked and they've, they've been having to struggle to get to the top, I pray, oh God, that you will lift them up. You that you said, I have filled him with the spirit of God, with great wisdom and ability and expertise. Fill up your children, fill up our youth, fill up our young ones, fill up our old men, fill up everybody, oh God Almighty, with the innate gifts and talents that we would use it, that like, Lord will be good craftsmen, that we will be skilled using our gifts, that we will not be lazy with our gifts. Can we just begin to pray? A lot of times we're lazy with the things God has given to us, or we get discouraged, or we stop developing ourselves. This is, as I'm speaking, I'm convicted as I'm praying along. Let's begin to pray. I want you to make this one very personal. That God Almighty, let there not be an opportunity that you have prepared for me and I am unprepared for. Well, Lord, I pray that the opportunities coming my way this month of September, begin to talk to the Lord. I just, when the Lord is leading this way, I know he's speaking. 
there's somebody, I think God has been telling you, it's either you're supposed to do something or a test or a certification as a job coming your way and you have not positioned yourself properly. Or God is saying, go back. You've missed some things out. Prepare yourself. Oh, Father, Lord, thank you. I don't know who it is, but there's a door that is coming your way. There is a favor that is coming your way. You have been asking God for certain things, but God is saying that you must be sensitive in the spirit. Package yourself properly so that you are not overlooked, so that you are not unprepared. Father, thank you because in the day of your power, your people will be willing. Give us the grace to do all you've called us to do, even in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible reminds us about the story of the talents. You know, if we look at Matthew 25, 14 to 30, it's a bit long. And most of us know this story, but it talks about, you know, it says the kingdom of God is like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. He says he gave to one five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. If I look at some of the commentaries that we have, every one of us, we can, uh, yeah, every one of us, we have, please let me show the commentaries. Um, every one of us have uh, different gifts and talents that God has given to us. The mountain of sports, arts, and entertainment. And I don't want anyone to listen to this and to think because we're talking about this mountain. We're talking about everyone's gifts and how it can be used. And to know that your gift is related to a mountain. When we're praying, I just realized, you know, something hit me. Have you noticed, I realized that <laughs> in this world, there are people that when they get to the mountain top, you see them drive, you see a very successful, a very rich person driving, or a lot of artists and the rest of them, driving certain cars, wearing certain clothes and jewelry. They are so rich, they can afford these cars, they can afford these clothes, they can afford this jewelry. But when you're on the mountain top, even the things you can afford, you don't even pay for it because Mercedes Benz wants to gift you with a car because everywhere you drive around Hollywood, they will know that this star drives Mercedes Benz and you have a stronger advertising, advertisement for them amongst that particular audience that you are called to. People go to award shows and they will say, who are you wearing? Whose clothes are you wearing? And that designer can go to another level. So there are some of us that our passion, our skill is to bring out beautiful designs and clothing and to sew. Some people might be thinking, I have always liked fashion. Maybe God is challenging you this morning that do you know in three months you can start take a class and just start to sew something. And then I'll give you uncommon ideas. A gift you didn't know you had. You just thought you liked it, but you didn't think you had time. It's time, my sisters, for us to stop and maybe make some time. It's never too late to start certain things, skills, pottery, um, poetry. Some of us can write um, music lyrics. You like to write. You like to write short stories. You like to write entertaining books. You like fiction, romance, crime. There's so many things inside of us, but sometimes in life, it looks like because we need to pay the bills and that's important. We don't do certain things, but God is saying that if you re let me help you, I have given you some talent. I will not give you what you're not able to do. According to their ability, he's given us certain things. Now, the beauty of this mountain of sports art and media, especially sports, especially sports, is that there is a powerful platform for evangelism. When people come to the stadium to watch, I like watching football and I love watching basketball and I love Olympics track and everything else like that. I'm very sporty. And if we, when I sit down, I don't know who you are when you're playing. All I know is that you score a goal and I shout, yippee, I'm excited. But then the more you score, the more you play skillfully, the more I will like, I like this person. So when I go on your Instagram handle or I start to follow you on social media and I say, this is my favorite, you know, sportsman or whatever the case may be. And I see that you pass a certain message of hope, of strength, of, of hard work, of diligence, of uh, acknowledging other people on your way to success and most of, of giving God glory. You begin to have a voice. You begin to speak. The day God will tell you to, or give you the opportunity to use your platform to speak up for Christ, it, might, it may be controversial, like the likes of Corey and Tibo and the rest of them, when they stand up to speak, it may be controversial, but guess what? The following day, everybody pays their tickets to watch them play. This is where power and authority comes through. Now, God wants us to raise a generation of believers 
were empowered to be everything God has called them to be. These people were given talents according to their ability. They were empowered. They went to trade with it. And we saw when the, the, the master came back, he was saying, well done. You were faithful over a little, have much. But the well done, good and faithful servant, I will not have made it in both. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Is the same response they gave to the person that had five and the person that had two. In other words, even the person that had one, if they came back and said, you gave me one, it's now two. He will still say, well done, good and faithful servant. But do you know what the Lord showed me one day? He said, do you know? that the person I gave one actually had the ability to say, you gave me one, but I have come back with 20. I said, really? God said, yes. Because sometimes I give just one. Have you noticed, if you're like me, that you can do three, four things. Sometimes you do this one, then you pause, you do that one, and that's an area that you have to ask God to give you grace when you are multi-gifted, multi-skilled. Sometimes if you're not careful, you don't produce as much as you can because you have little, little things there. But there are times when he gives you just one. Just one. Like the thunderbolt to same bolt. Just one. And he ran his heart out. And he ran and ran till he got to the top of the mountain. Sometimes, you know, he broke records. He broke records that till, I don't know when those records can be broken again. His name went into history. One, but he could have come up with so much more, but he hid it. This is a mountain that we need the body of Christ to have vision. A lot of our young ones have compromised. They go into the music industry, they compromise their values. If I look to somewhere like Nigeria, a lot of these people are children from church. If we talk about Aretha Franklin, they start singing in church. Whitney Houston, they start singing in church. Uh, this particular girl that is gone so well, they all had roots in church, but they're all over the place. Katy Perry Church, uh, this particular black lady, I don't know, I can't remember her name, church. All out there now, giving glory to the enemy. But that's where it came from. Because we don't have music production. We don't have connect. We know that the enemy might bring different things. But there's a sound that is coming. Hill song could break that barrier. When it comes from God, every of their songs, they are Grammy Award winning, multi-million dollar from worship, true worship. If we can go into the prayer slides. This mountain requires the body of Christ to arise. I'm really burdened about this. I'm really trusting God. Most of you know that I'm very passionate about this. We can do so much. Three, four of us in Esther's preparation room can open a dance studio. We can rent a studio. We can have the kids in the neighborhood start. The gym that uh, uh, the likes of Gabby Douglas went to, a woman started, a, a particular sort of woman that started that gym. She was a Christian woman. She would go and she would teach them values. She would use the word of God to teach them. She would teach them about the fruits of the spirit. And the, the, the kids were coming into that place. They were balanced. They were strong. They were growing. The parents felt happy that the atmosphere of that uh, gym was was, was good for the children. And the kids went to the Olympics and they did great things. Let's ask the Lord. That Father, let us not waste and despise the gifts and talents in the body of Christ. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 19, whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. It is on this earth we can use all these gifts and talents. Let's begin to say, talk to the Lord. That Father, Lord, you have called us to be the mothers in the spirit. You've called Esther's preparation room to birth certain things. We come, oh God Almighty, with humility to say, Lord, we want to birth into the body of Christ in the place of prayer gifts and talents we're calling them forth in the name of jesus we're calling them forth in the name of jesus we stand oh god as your intercessors and we pray oh god let this generation of young people arise generation of believers generation of men and women who have skills and abilities that should go to the mountain top of sports arts and entertainment lord use us in the body of christ to create institutions where we can raise our youth the bible says in isaiah 11 verse 2 
and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. I want you to pray for yourself. The Holy Spirit rest upon me. Give me grace and wisdom. Help me to go to the mountain top. I don't know what your hand knows to do, my dear sister. Begins to declare that my hand will go to the mountain top. My hand will take me to the mountain top. My gifts and talents will take me to the mountain top. The mountain top in my establishment, in my career, the mountain top in the business. Lord, even in the name of Jesus. You know, I was watching, there's a show that uh, they showed when they, they called um, uh, Inside Africa. It shows here on CNN International. And it just showed a particular lady um, from, I think, Ghana or somewhere. No, from the French part, anyway. And she just talked about how her mother was a very, very fashionable woman and she started, she uses our typical print material and she creates, you know, her clothes are fine, they're unique, you know, it's, it's okay, you know, it's nice. But she, I saw something that I loved. She said, she just put on her Instagram handle, you know, she said, I'm crying right now. I, she, she started that business and again, she started using the internet. So instead of getting a shop front, she said she just paid for models and photography. Lots of pictures are marketed through the internet and created, created a, a business with um, DHL. So all of a sudden in a quiet African country, she's shipping all over the world because people order from online. And she just said, you know, she said, I'm crying right now because I went on Instagram and somebody wore my picture and tagged me and it was Beyonce on a yacht. She wore two of her outfits just like that. And of course, because Beyonce is on a mountain top, she automatically has access to the mountain top. We need God to send us opportunities whereby our gifts can be used by all men. Our gifts and talents can be a blessing to all men. It's not supposed to be for one. That's why God says, separate all to me. Master craftsmen. I don't know what yours is. It could be different, but I just want you to say, Lord, if I can speak, I want to be an orator. I want to be a master craftsman in the area of speaking. Whatever I can do, I want to be a master craftsman. Lord, raise me up. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. Give me this morning, this night, this 1st of September, that we have started fasting and prayer. Lord, I will not be in the valley. Begin to declare, my dear sister. I will not be in the valley. My children will not be in the valley. I will go to the mountain top where you have called me to be. I will stand not before men, men. I will stand before kings. I will stand on the roof. I will be notable. I will use the opportunity and the things you've given to me in this world to use it. I will not sit down quietly in my house. I'm going to use everything available, whether it's social media, the internet. I'm going to stand Stand out. I'm going to improve my skill. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of wisdom. The same spirit that was on Jesus Christ that in three years he did phenomenal things. This same spirit rests upon me. I will do phenomenal things in the name of Jesus. This same spirit rests on the body of Christ that we may do phenomenal things in the name of Jesus. The mountain of sports, arts, and entertainment. It's a mountain that requires, like every mountain, but in particular, requires serious provision because there is a need to implement to build systems that's why i said sports clubs why can't we as the body of christ own individually even as a church training facilities theaters for plays there's one of my lovely ladies that i know in maryland where she just started this her production company i remember and now i've seen her she's having plays there was this play that uh, that came to um from, from Nigeria, it was, a, it was a play, but it was beautifully done. Um, um, starts with S, I've just forgotten. Saru, you know, and it was lovely. And one of the most beautiful scenes they added to it was a church scene where they sang a uh, particular church. It was beautiful. So many, it was packed. And the church part the scene of it, they, it was very true that they used the word and they used some stuff, you know, even though it was a circular play, but it was excellent. But somebody owns that theater that they used. Why can't we Christians own it? Why can't we have recording studios? Why can't we have film production companies? God says that where there is no vision, the people perish. God is the one that gives provision. He says in Haggai 2, the spirit, silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord 
of heaven's armies. I want you to begin to ask when Nehemiah had a burden for the broken walls of Jerusalem, the Bible says that God favored him because the king noticed and said, why are you sad? Remember what I talked about opportunities. The king says, what do you need? Nehemiah did not say, um, let me come back tomorrow and meet you. He immediately said, this is what I need. If you look at Nehemiah chapter two, brilliant. I loved it. How can I help you? But if you look at chapter one, Bible says, and he fasted and he prayed. These three days, my dear sisters, as we become closer to the EPR retreat, begin to fast and pray because there are some dreams and realities. We don't do retreats just because we want to. God gives us the word. Dare to dream was a word given to us in December, 2017. That was the word God gave us for this year's retreat. And so a lot of things we've been talking about, we didn't know would lead us here. It's time for us in our fasting and prayer to say, God, what else? What else? I want to be a part of building institutions for the kingdom of God. I want to leave a legacy. I want to start place centers. I want to start after school programs. I want to rent a place, oh God, a building and have a name outside of it where parents can bring their kids and I'll have a person who is teaching gymnastics here, someone who is teaching dance here, somebody who is teaching music here. I will get all this people and they are doing it. The parents will play. I'll create a business out of it and Lord, you will prosper it. I will have children lining up, youth lining up from my community looking for the next available space. I'm going to start a volleyball club. I'm going to start a netball club. I'm going to find a coach and pay a certain amount of money and rent a place and we'll call it a squad. It may not cost me more than 500, 700 dollars a month. But Lord, I believe you for the finances for this vision. I might start with 10 children or 11 children, but I will coach them such that we will go to competitions and our children will always win. This is who God is looking for. Begin, let's begin to talk to the Lord. The Father, the favor, the finances, the relationships that we need to build these institutions. Lord, give it to us, oh God. Let us not just stay, oh God, in our comfort zone. Help us to have a vision for the mountaintop, to go to the mountaintop. Send us the king Send us the financiers, oh God, to back this vision us. Send us help from above. Link us up, oh God. Give us strategic relationships. Help us to be your light, oh God. Help us to speak. The Bible says the silver and the gold belongs to you. You can order anybody. You can get make any of our products or our services catch anybody's attention. Lord, lift us up, we pray. Thank you because we are taking authority of the kingdom order. Oh, of the, of the mountain for sports, art, and entertainment, even in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. As we continue in prayer, this is for the persecuted church. We're going to be praying for the persecuted church in Tajik, Tajikistan. Tajikistan. Um, the president is Imor Mali Ramon, and this is a, a government that's a republic but uh, with a strong Islamic religious belief system that guides and uh, leads a lot of what goes on in the, in, 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 the, in the Republic. And unfortunately, because of that, uh, there's a lot of persecution, persecution of Christians coming from Islamic extremist, organized corruption, and crime. And out of a population of close to 8.9 million, only 62,000 are Christians. A very small percentage. In Tajikistan, no religious activities outside of state-run and state-controlled institutions are allowed. The government controls everything. The officials you know, are the ones driving the persecution. It's the government that is persecuting. It's the government that is pushing. It's not some people and the government is closing their eyes. The government is the one driving this persecution and they've ramped it up. Um, now, even Protestants are suspected, they're called spies and they are described as who that want to destroy the country's political system because the political system is engraved in a religious system. So when you bring in religion, they can link religion and politics together. And so they want to destroy and eradicate anything called Christian in Tajikistan. As in a lot of other countries, those who convert from Islam uh, face a lot of persecution. Their families are expected to expose them. There's a lot of pressure for them to recant their faith. And at times people are beaten under house arrest. And in some cases they have disappeared and we don't know where they are anymore. I want us to lift up our voices. The persecuted church is close to the heart of God. And let's just begin to, first of all, thank God, because the nations and the people belong to God. Nations and people belong to God. So let's give God. Thanks for the people, for the nation of 
Tajikistan. Let's begin to say, Lord, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and all those who dwell in it. The people that dwell in this nation belong to you. Therefore, we thank you because we know, Lord Jesus, you will be glorified in Tajikistan in the name of Jesus. The enemy may have a stronghold over the nation, but we thank you because you are doing something in that land that we cannot see it, but we know is moving. Thank you for the angels you've dispatched over Tajikistan. Thank you because the principalities and the powers over that nation will be broken in the name of Jesus. We declare that everywhere the spirit of the Lord is, Bible says there'll be liberty. Because we declare that the spirit and the power of God will be in Tajikistan, we say there'll be liberty. We pray that salvation will reign that there'll be freedom for Christians to worship freely. We pray, oh God Almighty, that you will have mercy upon that nation, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will send help from above. Help, oh God Almighty. That revival will break forth, oh God. We pray for the church, the underground church. The, although there's claimed to be 60-something thousand Christians, the word you reminded uh, Elijah that there are a lot more that have not bowed down. We know there are much more in Tajikistan. We pray, oh God, that your grace and your mercy will rest upon on them in the name of Jesus. We pray for the president. Let's pray for the president. President Emor Mali Ramon. Call his name before heaven today. Begin to declare that President Emor Mali Ramon, wherever you hear her, hear the word of the Lord. God's kingdom will come into Tajikistan. God's will will be done in Tajikistan as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus. We pray for you. We pray for your government. We pray that God that allowed Paul to speak to the to the rulers of the day will send word to you even in the name of Jesus. God that made Nebuchadnezzar have dreams that troubled his heart, that made the Pharaoh have dreams that troubled his heart. Lord, let President Emomali have a dream that would trouble his heart, that he would know that God is speaking to him, that he would know that God is showing him about the children and his people that is terrorizing, and that change must come, that Lord, you will stay his heart, that God, even within that government, I sense in my spirit, there are those who are hidden, who have not bowed their feet, Lord, that you protect them, that God, you strategically place them, so that when they need to speak, oh God, their lives will be saved, but they'll be used for the glory of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. We pray for strategic conversions in Tajikistan. Oh, the kind of conversions that it will be a beloved child or a beloved sibling or whatever the case may be, that people that will have access, that they will not be easily exposed, but that God will use them to speak life. You've done it before, oh God. We know you will do it again in the name of Jesus. Finally, let's pray for every believer in the nation of Tajikistan, that God will give them the grace to stand, that God will give them the grace to pray, that God will give them the grace to survive and miss persecution, that they will be unshakable, they will be immovable, they will be indefatigable, that they will not be weary, that they will not be tired, that they will not lose their crown in the name of Jesus, that they will not recant their faith, that they will hold fast, that God will give them the grace to hold on, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty, because we know, Lord, it's not by might or by power, it's by your spirit. Holy Spirit, help every believer in Tajikistan today. Let them have strength. Let them have strength. Let them have strength. We pray for everyone who is operating in the country or for supporting persecuted um, church. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will strengthen them. That, Lord, you give them wisdom. There are Christians going in there supplying Bibles and materials that we are supporting and praying for. Lord, we pray you will keep every one of them. That, Lord, they will not be exposed. That your angels will protect them even in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally, Lord, we bring up Leah Shaibu unto you. She's a young girl that has been held in captivity for months by Boko Haram. Release the others, but because she would not recant her faith, they held her back. Lord Almighty, we thank you. That Lord, although she is in the valley of the shadow of death at times, I thank you that she will not fear any evil. That your rod and your staff will comfort her. That her life will be a testimony. What the enemy planned for good, you will turn to evil. What they took, they took upon them a snare. She will become a snare to them. That because of her, many of them will be converted. Because of that, many of them will have an experience with God. Father, we pray, oh Lord, that she will be released back to her family, that we shall rejoice at the good news that will come regarding Leah Shaibu in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, for we know that we have asked all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, and we have confidence that you hear us and you hear our cry. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God, even in Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen. Uh, like we've said earlier on, if this is your first time, if you're just listening to, or just logging on to Esther's Operation Room, thank you very much for praying with us. Um, in our, uh, in our, in our profile page, you'll see more information on how you can connect with us on social media, Instagram, Facebook. But thank you very much, and have, God bless you for for tuning in. Amen. Let's stop the recording. Amen.